In 2016, many argued the UK had the best of both worlds, membership of the European Union, but special opt-outs of the Euro single currency and Schengen agreement plus a generous rebate. However, since leaving the European Union, the UK has experienced uh, numerous problems, a lower economic growth, lower investment and a devaluation of a pound, with some arguing GDP is around 5% less than it would have been if we'd stayed in the EU. The dismal economic outlook has led to a surge in support for rejoining the EU to the highest ever levels, with a large majority saying leaving was now wrong. But after years of tortuous Brexit negotiation, the EU almost certainly would not give the UK their former special deal. Rejoining the EU would probably mean accepting Schengen and accepting the single currency and probably losing the rebate too. But the big question is, would the UK economy benefit or be harmed by membership of the Euro? The debate is also important uh, should Scotland gain independence and wish to join the EU. Would a Euro work for Scotland? Firstly, in the Euro, the UK or Scotland would lose monetary policy independence. Interest rates would be set by the ECB for the whole Eurozone area. And that would not necessarily be in the best interest of the UK. They may be too high or too low. Secondly, in the Euro, there is no exchange rate flexibility. The value of a pound cannot fluctuate to absorb higher inflation or falling productivity. The best illustration of the potential dangers of the single currency is the Euro crisis of 2012. In the early 2000s, Southern European countries became uncompetitive because they had higher inflation than Germany. This led to their exports becoming uncompetitive and a record current account deficit. In the recession of 2010, countries like Greece, Portugal, Spain and Ireland were stuck. They couldn't devalue, they couldn't cut interest rates and they couldn't print money. But things got worse. Because they had no independent central bank, bond markets became nervous about their liquidity and sold debt, causing a surge in bond yields. The response of the EU was that Greece and others should pursue a devastating austerity, higher taxes, lower spending, to try to reduce budget deficit and deal with high bond yields. But this austerity itself was self-defeating, causing an even deeper recession and falling tax revenues. As Paul Krugman said, the Greek economy collapsed, largely as a result of those very austerity measures. It was a real disaster for the Greek economy, which suffered unemployment of 25% and a recession deeper than the 1930s. At the time, it appeared the euro was a broken project, too ambitious, with underperforming economies being pushed into an austerity black hole. The UK's decision to stay out of the euro looked genuinely inspired. However, the story doesn't stop there. Facing a Euro crisis, the president of the ECB, Mario Draghi, made a speech saying that they would do whatever is necessary, which involved buying bonds to calm markets and bring bond yields down. And this reduced the pressure for spending cuts. And since 2012, you could say that forecasts of the Euro's demise have proved unfulfilled, and countries which are still divergent from Germany are still keen to join. There are now 20 member countries in the Euro, plus two who have unofficially joined. And in recent years, we can see a strong link between UK interest rates and ECB interest rates, which reflects the, uh, how the economic cycles are closely linked. However, it is argued the UK should still retain its own monetary policy because the UK is unusually sensitive to interest rates due to the prominence of the UK housing market and the amount of people with high variable mortgages. 
So if interest rates are only slightly wrong, it could cause very significant problems. For example, the great financial crisis of 2009 hit the UK economy hard because of our reliance on financial services. In response, the UK cut rates to zero, below that of the ECB, and the UK pursued quantitative easing. In 2011, the ECB actually increased interest rates because they were concerned about inflation, and rates were 2% higher than the UK, which is a big difference. Just look at how much damage it causes when interest rates rise by 2% to the UK mortgage markets. In the Euro, the UK recession would almost certainly have been even deeper. Another interesting thing to look at is relative inflation rates. Firstly, the inflation cycle is fairly closely linked, suggesting that the UK economy does move in a similar broad pattern to the Eurozone, which may raise hopes for harmonisation and the UK able to join. However, between 2016 and 2021, the UK does have a persistently higher inflation rate, which is indicative of a pound's devaluation and lower productivity in the UK. Without the ability for the pound to fall, the UK would have become even more uncompetitive. Uh, Yanis Varoufakis, a former Greek finance minister, remains very critical of the euro, arguing that it promotes division rather than conversion. He points to poor growth amongst intra-eurozone trade and the strongest growth and convergence coming with non-euro member countries like Poland and Czech Republic. He points to big swings in the Polish slotty, which gave the economy more flexibility and an ability, ironically, to converge more closely with the German economy. But this flexibility is lost when you're in the Eurozone. Now we could add that joining the Euro gives other economic benefits, lower transaction costs, exchange rate certainty, encouraging foreign investment into the Eurozone. Certainly for tourists, the Euro is very convenient. But for businesses, these benefits are really very minor. The UK and City of London really didn't uh, suffer anything from being outside the Euro. Now, of course, leaving the single market is a completely different matter. The big benefits of rejoining the European Union would not come from the Euro, but joining the single market, because it would help reverse the post-Brexit devaluation of the pound, a key factor in high inflation, it would lead to lower import prices, lower, cheaper food prices, and it would help reverse the UK's disastrous decline in business investment, potentially increasing labour productivity. Now, a significant political challenge uh, of rejoining the single market would be accepting free movement of labour. However, free movement of labour would help fill in labour vacancies, improve economic growth and increase tax revenue. It would cause costs in terms of more upward pressure on the population, higher pressure on house prices and rents, which are already quite unaffordable. And the big question really is whether the government would be able to invest in areas seeing large net scale migration to improve public services. Also, since Brexit, the decline in migration from the EU has largely been offset by migration from non-EU. So overall migration may be less impacted by free movement within Europe than we think. Now clearly there are many political issues and the prospect of rejoining the European Union may seem a long way off. But given the underperforming uh, economy, there's going to be strong pressure to rejoin the single market. But there's a very clear distinction between rejoining the single market and rejoining the European Union, which may entail rejoining the euro single currency. Because as an economist, I still remain somewhat sceptical that the euro would be good for the UK or Scottish economy. The UK could survive with the euro, but I don't think it would flourish because it is good, it is advantageous to have that flexibility of monetary policy and exchange rate and fiscal policy. So given the economics and politics of the situation, it's very hard to see the UK ever rejoining the European Union. We've lost our special deal, but there will be an increasingly strong case for rejoining the single market, which enables us to have the, the main benefits of the European Union without the uh, political costs, the political problems, I should say, and also rejoining the euro. 
Hope you found this video useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and do check out this video on the UK's long-term economic decline.